Question, are we sinners because we sin or do we sin because we are sinners? Good afternoon everyone and welcome to Youth Worship. For months we have been focusing on growing our faith. How has it been so far? Has your faith in God been growing? We certainly hope so. Some months ago we began our journey of growing together in Christ. We talked about the necessity of spiritual growth. In that section, we learned that grace is the foundation of spiritual growth. We are to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God's love for us and our love for God compels us to embark on this lifetime journey of growing together in our faith in Jesus. And then, we answer the question, how will we grow spiritually? In this section, we learn that God's grace trains us to be disciplined in our spiritual walk. We learn to rely on the Holy Spirit, to grow through the Word of God, the importance of fellowship, and last youth worship, we learn the importance of being constantly reminded of the gospel of Jesus. Well, today, we've finally reached section 3 of our series, The Marks of Spiritual Growth. And in this section, we will learn how we can tell if we are indeed growing in our faith. And the very first mark that we will talk about today is holiness. We are called by God to pursue holiness as God is holy. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you cause us to understand your word today. And we pray that it will not just be head knowledge, that you will place that desire in our hearts to truly pursue you and delight in your holiness. 
And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us read 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 14 to 16. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, Be holy, because I am holy. The topic of holiness can be intimidating because we know there's so much for us to do in this area. So let me begin with some good news from Romans 6.14 that says, For sin shall no longer be your master because you are not under the law, but under grace. The first good news is we are not under law. In other words, we no longer have to provide for our own righteousness that justifies us before God. We no longer bear the burden of having to earn God's favor by perfectly obeying everything that God has commanded. God has declared us innocent even though we are guilty. And this is because of Jesus Christ, which is the second good news from this verse. We are under grace. In other words, Jesus Christ is our righteousness. This is the opposite of being under law in which we have to provide for our own righteousness by perfect law keeping. We receive the righteousness of Christ as our own by grace and through faith alone. None of us will ever deserve it. No amount of riches could ever pay for it. And there's not enough years of service that could ever match the grace of salvation given to us through the life and death of Jesus Christ. Jesus has rescued us out of the kingdom of darkness and brought us into his kingdom of light, which leads us to the third good news. We are no longer slaves to sin. Sin is no longer our master. At the moment God saved us, we were given a new nature that is freed from sin, not only from the eternal penalty of sin, but also from its power over us. You are no longer the same you before God saved you in Christ. You now have the power through the Holy Spirit to live victoriously over your sinful desires. Sin is no longer your master. Instead, Jesus is now our true and only master. We are not under law. We are under grace. And we are no longer slaves to sin. And let me tell you, that Romans 6.14 is a promise. God will accomplish all these things for us. Once redeemed, always redeemed. This is a wonderful assurance for us because we know that we may stumble from time to time. But it doesn't change the new reality we have in Christ. We are still not under law. We are still under grace. And we still have power to rise from where we have fallen and follow the course Jesus has set for us. We'll talk about this a little bit more later. For now, let's address the question, should we then keep sinning? This is the same rhetorical question that the Apostle Paul asked in Romans chapter 6. I suggest you go through that chapter in your Bible reading time. So what do you think? Should we just keep on sinning? This is what John Piper says about people who use God's grace as license to maintain a lifestyle of sinfulness. I said at the beginning, it is people whose Christianity is a group of ideas about Christ, not an experience of the preciousness of Christ. Their Christianity is all truth and no treasure all choices and no cherishing, all logic about Christ 
and no love for Christ. All decision and no delight. And though how many people there are who come to church and are in this category. I will rephrase what John Piper said. Christianity cannot just be all head knowledge and no heart for Christ. A true believer surrenders to Christ all control over his life. This is why a pursuit of holiness is a mark of a growing faith in Christ. If there is no pursuit of holiness, and all there is is a lifestyle of sin, then it's not far from the possibility that such a person is not a child of God at all. Martin Luther once said, Justification is by faith alone but not by a faith that is alone. This is what James 2.26 is saying. Faith without deeds is dead. Going back to the plant illustration, if the plant didn't grow at all, no flowers, no fruits, no signs of growth whatsoever, then the plant is most likely dead. Growth is an indicator of life. In the same way, if there are no signs of growth in our faith, no fruit of the Spirit, no transformation whatsoever, not even a desire to be more like Christ, then by all likelihood, our faith is dead. We are not saved in the first place. If you desire to grow in your faith and love for Christ, then that reassures me that your Christianity is not mere head knowledge. And I also hope that it is not a mere self-improvement. The goal of spirituality is not to be trendy or to feel good about ourselves. Instead, the goal of righteousness is holiness. The goal is Christ-likeness, all for God's glory. Now we are ready to talk about the somewhat intimidating command in 1 Peter 1.16. Be holy, because I am holy. Holy is a biblical word that means unique or separate. When the Bible talks about the holiness of God, it refers to God's utter uniqueness from His creation, as in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 2. There is none holy like the Lord, for there is none besides you. There is no rock like our God. There is none more powerful, more majestic, or more glorious than our God. He is on a league of His own. He is simply matchless. Our God is holy. Moreover, when the Bible says God is holy, it also refers to His moral perfection as in Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 13, that says, Your eyes are too pure to look on evil. You cannot tolerate wrongdoing. God is too holy to look at sin and evil favorably. God is the source of all moral goodness and purity. So when God calls us to be holy just as He is holy, He means, first, we are set apart for God's purpose. Upon salvation, God has set us apart from the fallen world and brought us into His family. Yes, we are still in the world, but we are no longer of the world. I'm sure you've heard of the phrase, Others man ka oi? In a way, that describes our new identity in Christ. We are no longer like the rest. We are now different because of Christ in us. And we are now to make a difference in this world for Christ. We live for God's kingdom agenda and point people towards Jesus. Second, the call to holiness is a call to righteousness. We are called to purity. As Jerry Bridges puts it, 
we are to take aggressive action to separate ourselves both from the sin within us, pride, selfishness, a critical and judgmental spirit, irritability, patience, sexual lust, and so on, and also to take the step to separate ourselves from the ever-encroaching temptations of society around us. So to separate ourselves from sin that is within us and around us. So to pursue holiness, to be holy just as God is holy, is to pursue a life of godly purpose and a life of purity. How do we do this? Everything that we've talked about for the past months will help us pursue holiness, the training from God's grace, the enablement from the Holy Spirit, the truth in God's Word, the encouragement and accountability from fellow believers, and the power of the Gospel of Jesus. Let's talk about this in more practical ways. First, we must hate all sin. We cannot just condemn stealing, for it is obviously sinful to us, but continue to be reckless with our words for the sake of being cool or funny or trendy, failing to be mindful of the effect of our words on others. Second, we must constantly fight all sin. The struggle is a constant battle. We must put sin to death every day because our old selves will certainly try to reassert itself. The fight against evil and temptation is a lifetime battle. We must break our sinful patterns and train ourselves in righteousness. Third, we must understand that sin is a rebellion against God. Not only should we be bothered by sin because it robs us of our joy or it makes us guilty or sad, or that it brings along with it grave consequences, but ultimately, we should put sin to death because it is a rebellion against God Himself. We should stop sinning because God is grieved or saddened by our sins. And lastly, we must starve our sinful desires. Someone once told me, if you put two dragons in a fight against each other, who do you think will win? The one who is well fed will win over the one who was starved to weakness. We must not give in to our sinful desires. We need to find ways to subdue it, to starve it. We need to rely on the Holy Spirit through prayer and not just on our sheer willpower. Let me end by letting you know this wonderful truth, the truth that you are a saint. A saint. Yes, the Bible considers you to be a saint. This may be a surprise to you because the word saint these days means someone who is perfect, even worthy to be prayed to by other religious groups. So what is a saint according to the Bible? The word saint simply means holy one. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 21, we read, Greet every saint in Christ Jesus. The brothers who are with me greet you. Sadly, though we are saints, we still sin sometimes. But the big difference is we are justified sinners, meaning we are guilty, but we are declared innocent because of Christ's righteousness. We are not saints because we've attained moral perfection or that because we are just in and by ourselves. Instead, we are saints because we are set apart for God's purpose and we are pursuing a life of purity. At the very beginning, I ask, are we sinners because we sin or do we sin because we are sinners? Well, sinfulness is not just a matter of 
doing and failing to do. But it is also a matter of nature. When Adam disobeyed God, all of humanity are born sinners. We were all born with this fallen nature that rebels against God. That's why we sin. What happened to us when we placed our faith in Jesus is that all of our sins are forgiven and our standing before God has been changed from guilty to innocent. Again, because of Christ. R.C. Sproul explains it this way. The instant we believe, we are immediately justified. And God does not wait for our good works before He declares us just. We are still sinners when the declaration comes. There is no time lapse between our justification and the beginning of our sanctification. But there is a great time lapse between our justification or salvation and the completion of our sanctification or the process of Christ-like transformation. I hope you are encouraged. I hope when you read 1 Peter 1.16, Be holy because I am holy. You are no longer intimidated. Rather, you feel grateful to God for setting you apart for Him and for sparing you from the destructiveness and stability of sin. You are precious to Him. I hope it brings you joy to know that you are a work in progress and God is not done with you yet. He will certainly bring to completion the good work He has begun in you. Together, let's pursue holiness. Are released 
has said that he will bring me home. And day by day, I know he will renew me until I stand.